Hello coders, welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today we're going to be taking a look at what's in PHP 8.3. We're going to start by looking at this blog article from Stitcher.io. What's new in PHP 8.3? And I'm going to be pointing out some of the things that I'm quite excited about. For those that aren't on PHP 8.2 yet, I highly recommend trying to upgrade your your stuff because PHP 8.3 will be released on November 23rd this year. Improvements to readability classes and other things like breaking changes that you really should be aware of. Why I'm doing this today to let people know what's happening with the, the wonderful world of PHP 8.3 is here or will be here next month. This time next month it will be available. It has improvements to read-only classes, the new JSON validate function, additions to the recently added randomizer class, stack overflow detection and more. I'll leave a link to this in the show notes below. This is stitcher.io forward slash blog and then new in PHP 8.3. Scrolling down, the first thing we've got is read-only amendments. So the RFC proposes two changes, only one was accepted, being able to reinitialize read-only properties while cloning. So we can now reinitialize this property created at when we're using the magic method underscore underscore clone. Now, I must admit, I haven't really done much, hardly anything actually, with read-only classes myself. But it's always good to be aware of what's coming up on the horizon. So when I do use read-only classes, I know that I can now reinitialize properties when I'm using the clone magic method. Scrolling down, we have type class constants. This is something that I've wanted for a long time. So we can now have uh, uh, type classes. So string, for example, uh, could be an int, could be a boolean, what have you. And we can create type class constants. Brilliant. I mean, a small thing, but really quite good. It, enhances what we already have. This one's pretty cool, the override attribute. Now, I had to read this a few times just to work out what on earth it was doing and the point of it, but I now understand. And the override attribute is used to show a programmer's intent. It basically says, I know this method is overriding a parent method. If that would ever change, please let me know. Now, the important thing is that, let's say you've got a class like we've got here. We've got a child class that extends a parent. We have a method will, uh, sorry, method with default implementation here, which returns one. And then we want to override this and we want to actually return two. So what we would do is have override. And what it would know, it would be intelligent to know that if the parent method, the method in which you're overriding has changed, so for example, if it changes its function name, then we're going to get an error. So for example, if the parent here changes the method to method with new implementation rather than method with default implementation, we're going to get an error here uh, because we know that we're no longer overriding anything. We have that override attribute, but we're not actually overriding anything. PHP is more is intelligent to know that actually with this override attribute, we're not actually overriding anything anymore and therefore we get an error which i think is very very clever yeah i'm i'm happy with that that's that's a that's a good thing another thing that i'm happy with which is a breaking change is that negative indices in arrays now work properly so for example if you had minus 5 as your indice here in your array and then you had another element in that array the next element would just default to 0 as we can see here in the example so minus 5 and then 0 right what it should do is it should go minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 right as you would expect and uh, that's what it's doing now so starting from PHP 8.3, the next item will be added at the index of minus four, which is good. <laughs> it's good. It is a breaking change, however, because there may be code in there that you've got that that uses this hacky kind of way to say that the next element has an indice of zero rather than minus four. So you just be careful with that one. Uh, okay, anonymous read-only classes, again, I haven't really done much with read-only classes myself, but now we can make them anonymously, which is awesome. Um, and this one is, uh, I'm, I'm so glad we have, <laughs> really glad we have the new JSON validate function. 
So previously, when you wanted to validate JSON, you would have to go through a series of functions, function calls in, in the JSON space in order to work out whether or not you've got an error. So I, I believe there was a decoding thing you had to do. So now we can actually use JSON validate, passing in your JSON, the depth uh, and the flags as you would normally, and then it would return true or false, whether or not it's valid or not, rather than having to do a bunch of decoding in order to, to, to work out whether it's valid. Now, I don't know whether this is going to be more performant. I'll be interested to know if um, anyone does any kind of testing as to whether this JSON validate function is more performant than having to do the decoding to then get the last er uh, JSON error out. Um, that would be cool. We have a, a randomizer addition. Now in PHP 8.2, we have the new randomizer class. I'm going to hold my hand up. I've never used it. Um, but this in 8.3, we have some small additions to that. So uh, the additions here are, I think, get float returns uh, between minimum and maximum. You can define whether min and max should be included thanks to the interval boundary enum closed means the value is included while open means excluded. So again, I'm going to have to gloss over this a little bit because I've never used the randomizer class. <laughs> It's something that I do definitely want to use now because they're obviously improving it. And there are cases where I'm pretty sure I could use it uh, in my day to day. So there we go. There's some changes to the randomizer. Dynamic class fetch, sorry, dynamic class constant fetch. This is cool, right? This is a little bit of syntactic sugar, which makes sense in my opinion. So in PHP 8.3 allows you to fetch constants with a more dynamic syntax. For those listening, I'll just explain what this is. So let's say, for example, you have a class of foo and you have a constant in that class of bar, which you could use types for to say it's a string. But anyway, so you've got a constant bar, which equals bar. And then you have a, a, a variable called name, which equals bar, uppercase bar. That's going to be the constant, right? So let's say you wanted to pull out the class constant that has the 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 constant name of a variable, right? So a variable of this, in this case is name and its, its value is bar. And you want to pull out that class constant that has the value of the variable value, right? So you can now do foo, which is the class, um, colon, colon, and then in sort of curly braces or um, brackets, I should say, you can now put in the variable name that you want to use. So instead of what you would normally have to do is class is foo colon colon class, and then you would have to concatenate the colon colon to the variable name, which is very long winded. And you would also have to wrap that around a constant uh, uh, function call, right? But now you can just do foo colon colon uh, curly braces or curly brackets, and then name. Simple as. Awesome stuff. Right. So there's more appropriate date time exceptions, which is always, always good. I'm going to skip over this because there's quite a lot, but they're improving the date times. And date times are, it's a horrible black box of, of stuff that one just accepts kind of works and kind of doesn't work, but they're improving it, which is great. <laughs> Okay, so improved unserialized error handling. That's always good too. So unserialized will now emit an E warning when running into problems instead of sometimes an E notice, which is great. Uh, this RFC is proposed. So the RFCs are linked to the in this blog, right? So this says this RFC also proposes proposed adding more exceptions when running unserialized, but that part didn't get accepted. So if you want to go through the RFCs and you want to see the decisions and see the the actual uh, examples of these things, then go through this blog and then click on the RFC links to actually see the uh, the, the description of these RFCs and, and how they're actually going to be used. OK, so there's also changes to the range function. This is a breaking change. Uh, a type error is now thrown when passing objects, resources, or arrays as boundary inputs. A more descriptive value error is thrown when passing zero for the step value. Uh, if step is a float, that can be interpreted as an int. This is now done so. Um, 
that's pretty handy. A value error is now thrown if any argument is infinity or NAN, not a number. Now we've got some warnings. So an E warning is now emitted if the start or end values are empty or empty strings. Uh, the value continues to cast the value of zero and then some more warnings. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go through all of this. There's quite a few changes to the range function. I'll link that. There's also a breaking change regarding traits and static properties. Go check out the change log for that. There's a change to stack overflow detection. So in PHP 8.3 adds two new any directives called zend.maxallowed stack size and zend reserved stack size. Programs that are close to overflowing the call stack may now throw an error when using more than the difference between the allowed stack size and the reserved stack size. Stack size. Uh, the benefit of this feature is that the stack overflow induced segmentation faults won't result in seg faults anymore, making debugging a lot easier. Yay! <laughs> cool, that's pretty cool. There is a new MB string pad function. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all of this, but there's also magic methods, enclosures, and named arguments. There's some changes there. There is an invariant constant visibility. That is a breaking change. Previously, vi Previously, visibility for constants weren't checked when implementing an interface. PHP 8.3 fixes this bug, but it might lead to code breaking in some places if you weren't aware of this behavior. Okay, so you've got an interface called i, right? And you've got a public constant of foo, which is a string of foo. And then you've got a, cl a class c, which implements i with a private constant of foo. That will cause a problem, right? Because the environment the invariant constant visibility is now going to be a problem. All right, so there are some small deprecations, uh, deprecation RFC, I'll, I'll let you check all that out. There are some small but noticeable changes in this part. So there are things like the GC status has four new fields running protected full and buffer size. There's other things such as the MySQL I underscore poll now raises an, a value error when the read nor error arguments are passed. Array underscore pad is now limited to the maximum number of elements an array can have before it was only possible to add at the most 10, 0, 4, 8, 5, 7, 6 elements at a time. <laughs> uh, the new postfix functions, postfix sys conf, postfix, post six, sorry, path conf, post six f path conf and post 6 e access executing proc get status multiple times will now always return the right value of post 6 systems and op cache dot consistency checks any directive was removed there's also some improvements around array sum and array product so that was a quite a huge sort of whistle stop tour of PHP 8. There are a lot of things in there that I didn't mention. All right. So I guess the override attribute I'm really looking forward to the the fact that the interfaces now have the correct visibility scope checking. Right. There are certain things in there that I want to learn more about. So, the, for example, the randomizer classes, uh, where are they? They're they're somewhere up here. Uh, I want to be checking those out. Here we go. Randomizer. I want to see if there's um, any way I can use those in the current stuff that I'm doing at the minute. That's pretty cool. The JSON validate. This is probably, in my opinion, the overall winner here. <laughs> this is something that is going to be so cool. And I'll be very interested to know if this is more performant than doing the decoding and then getting the errors that way. Um, so yeah, PHP 8.3 is going to be here in November the 23rd. Go check it out when, when it's available. Go see if you can upgrade your systems uh, and yeah, have fun with it. I'm really looking forward to it. PHP is here to stay and hey, there's going to be some really interesting stuff coming up. Take care, everyone. Lots of love. Speak to you soon. Happy coding. Cheers. Bye bye.